Hello, I'm Travis from Brandywine Farm, and today we're going to be putting a junction box on a solar laminate that we bought from Sun Electric to create our own solar panel. And we, this laminate does not have a frame or a junction box currently. We will put the junction box on, and then we'll put it in a wood frame in our array so we can produce off-grid electricity. Uh, to get started, I will go over all the tools that we will be using and tell you what we will be doing for each one of them. The first thing is a utility knife, most people call it a box cutter, and this will be used to cut into the bus bar and uh, to scrape away the insulation on the bus bar so we can solder the wires to it. The second thing is a pair of locking forceps. These will be used to hold the wire in place while we solder it. And these are very important to have the locking kind and not just a pair of forceps because you will need to be able to lock it down, lock the wire down to hold it in place. Uh, the next thing is our soldering pin. This is a Kester flux pin that we'll be using to put flux on our wire and on our bus bar before we solder. This is the solder that we'll be using, the wire, and you want to be sure that you use rosin core solder and not acid core. Acid core is for plumbing, rosin core is for electric. The next thing is our super glue gel. You want to use uh, the thickest gel that you can find because it dries quicker and it holds the wires in place better. The next thing is our clamp. This will be used to hold the wires in place after we glue them until the super glue sets. Next thing is a caulking gun with a tube of 100% silicone in it. Uh, we'll need the silicone to uh, uh, seal the junction box to the laminate after we get, get it on. Okay. The next thing is our pre-tinned bus wire. Now it comes in a roll like this. This is a 30 foot roll. You can buy it off eBay and it's not very expensive. I've already got it cut in 6 inch pieces for this project and we will be putting the 6 inch pieces on and then, drain, then trimming them to length. Next thing is our soldering iron. This is a, a 140 watt. Uh, you can use one down to a 40 watt if you have a smaller one because you don't need a lot of heat for this, but uh, you have to have at least 40 watts to have enough heat to melt the solder. The next thing is our electrician's tape. Uh, we're going to use today, this is uh, rubber electrician's tape, and we're going to use this and super glue it between the wires to insulate the wires from one another. This is our junction box that we purchased separately from uh, from the uh, panel. We didn't get them together. We actually bought the junction boxes from eBay. And this is what we'll be inserting the wires into. And then we'll use the uh, wires here to connect to the other panels and into our solar system. This is a pair of needle nose pliers or long nose pliers and we will just use those for to help hold wires and, and uh, bus bars just to pick them up with. This is a small screwdriver used to uh, activate the locks on the panel and you'll see how you use it uh, at the end when we put everything together. Okay. This panel is a Sunny Lake uh, 225 watt uh, it's a 24 volt panel which produces 36.6 .6 actual volts of open circuit electricity. Uh, the, when you uh, hook it to the charge controller, it will uh, the charge controller will modify the voltage coming in from the panel to uh, produce voltage for your inverter or to charge your batteries. Now, on some of the panels that you purchase, they already have the bus wires on them, and you only need to extend them. 
This one I chose for this video because it has two bus wires missing here. Let me hold the pin there. These two bus wires are actually missing. You can see where they've had the junction box on the panel. And when they took it off, they broke these two bus wires off completely. Now these two bus wires still have tabs on them. So what we will do is just bring these bus wires out, weld an extension on them, or solder an extension on them. So that it goes, it'll be long enough to go into the junction box. This one, on this side, we will actually have to cut into the bus bar, bus bar raise the bus bar, solder the bus wire to it, and then go back down to the panel and run them into the junction box. So, uh, just in a second here, we'll get started and we'll do the hard part first, which is cutting the bus bar out and soldering the wires to it to go into the junction box. Okay, the first thing that we're going to do is to mark where the bus bar is. So you'll, if you decide to do this, you'll know where to look and where to start your cut to to take the bus bar out. Now, I can feel with my finger that the bus bar is right here. And I don't know if the camera will capture it or not, but you can actually see the line there. So what we're going to do is we're going to make a mark right here. And this is where we're going to cut the insulation on the back of the panel. Then we will raise the bus bar up and we will clean it off and we will solder the bus wire to the bus bar. Now you need to be very careful and only cut about an eighth of an inch so you don't cut into the panel itself. So we're making a small incision here right along our line. Now there's actually two bus bars here. There will be one under the other, and the one closest to the outside of the panel is the negative bus bar. The one closest to the center of the panel is the positive bus bar. Made a small incision. Let's see if we can get something under this bus bar and start to raise it up. There's the layer of insulation. We need to cut that off so we can actually get down to the bus bar, which you can start to see there now. Now there's the end of it. Now we just want to pull up. Now here's where we need our needle nose pliers to actually raise the bus bar up. 